Hello, in this tutorial we are going to talk about working with files using the Python programming language. What we are going to learn in this particular tutorial is how to open files, read files, write files, and append to files. Let's get started by learning how to open a file using the open function. You can open a file for reading, writing, or appending. Here is the open function's arguments and defaults. So when you call the open function, which is built into Python, you don't have to import anything. You just go open the file name and which mode to use. You'll note here in this uh, function that the mode is automatically set to R. That is its default. R means that it's in read-only mode. So if you just do open parenthesis the path to the file that you want to open and then close parenthesis, you're opening that file in read-only mode. Let's see, buffering is set to negative 1, encoding is none. Most of the time you don't have to worry about any of these other ones unless you're doing something special. Like occasionally when you're opening a file, um, you might need to set its encoding to get it to open and read correctly, for example, or to write correctly for that matter. Um, let's go ahead and continue. So here are the different file modes you can set. R is for read, is the default. W is for open for writing. So if the file exists when you use the W mode, uh, it will replace its contents. There is no warning. You will just delete that file and it will get overwritten. Um, A is also for writing, but it will append to the end of the file if the file exists. Otherwise, it will create the file. B is special. It opens a file in binary mode and you can combine it with R or W. So you can re do RB for read in binary mode or WB for write in binary mode. Um, T is text mode. I've almost never seen this mode used and is a default. And then you also have the plus mode, which is for reading and writing. You don't see this very often either, but it's there if you need it. All right, so here's kind of the old method that you'll still sometimes see for opening files. You do a file handler equals open, and then we'll just say example.txt. We'll pretend that there's an example.txt file here. It'll open it, and it'll create what we are calling a file handler. It's an object. That object you can use to um, do something with. So you could like read a line out of the text file, for example, and then you just close it. You should always close the file handler when you're done accessing the file. You don't want to leave a bunch of old a bunch of file handlers open because you can end up running into errors later on in your program. For example, if you want to reopen the file and it's already open, you're probably going to get an error. Or if you have it open in read-only mode and you happen to want to append to it now, well, you won't be able to if you haven't closed it already. So always close it when you're done reading or writing. What happens when you have an exception after opening a file? Well, you're gonna, it's going to throw an exception. So the proper way to get around that is to open the file inside of a try except if you're using the old method. So here we have file handler inside of the try except right now we're just going to pass. You could say accept I.O. error because you want to catch that, or you know you might want to catch a permission error and actually print out a message to the user. You could do that here. We're going to pass for now, and in a finally statement, we will force it to close. So in the old way of doing this code, you would run, you would run it so that it would open the file and it would always close it. That's what the finally statement is for, is to always do something even if an exception occurs. Fortunately, there is another way, the new and improved open method. Python added the with uh, statement, and you can use the with statement to open up a text file. So here we use with open, the name of the text file, and then you use as to assign the result of opening the file to file handler. Then as before, you do whatever you want to do, and then, for example, here we're going to do data equals file handler dot read. That will read the entire file into memory and assign it to data. Once you're outside of the with statement, 
it will automatically close the file. Even if there's an exception that happens, the with statement will basically replace this basically replaces this code where you do try except finally with a simple with statement. So it's always recommended to go with this method if at all possible. The with statement uh, activates what is known as a context manager. Context managers are used when you want to set something up and tear something down. So in this example, you open a file, do something, and then close the file. It's like having the finally statement built in. So let's talk about reading files now. Here we're going to open uh, example.txt as a file handler and just print out each line in the file. So for line in file handler, print line. What that means is it's going to loop over the contents of the file because the file handler is iterable and it's going to print out each line. This is a quick and easy way to read a, read a file line by line so you don't have to read the whole thing into memory, which can be dangerous in some respects because you know if you're running a machine that has a low amount of RAM installed, you can actually make your program crash by trying to load too much memory you know, or too much data into RAM, into your memory. So as I said, this code open the text file, loop over each line in the file, and print it out. Yep, the file handler can be iterated over, which is really, really handy. All right, another way is to read a file in chunks. So you can specify how much of the file to read, uh, how, what the, how big the chunk file should be, how much of the chunk itself is. So in this case, you're saying file handler dot read 1024. So it's going to read 1020, uh, basically one kilobyte each time it goes through this. That's why we're going to use a, a while loop here. So while true, with open, read the, read it. And I think this is actually kind of backwards. We should probably do this. Um, have that code a little backwards there. So we open up it, open up the file while true. We do um, read one chunk, one kilobyte of data, print it out, and if, and then when we reach the end it's going to return nothing. So the data will become empty and will break out of the, the true while loop. Let's talk about reading a binary file. So to read a binary file, we need to use R and B. So here we're going to open it like a PDF file. To open it up properly, you want to read it in binary mode. So RB is the important part here. And of course, if you try to print out the contents of a binary file, it's not going to be human readable. It's going to look really weird. So, you know, give it a try if you want, but you're probably not going to be able to decipher very much. All right, let's talk about writing files. The syntax is mostly the same as reading a file, but here you use W or WB mode to enable the write modes. When using W or WB, if the file already exists, you will end up overwriting it. Python doesn't warn you. It doesn't say, are you sure you want to destroy your file? It'll just, uh, it'll just overwrite it. So be careful when using W and WB modes because, you know, you can lose data this way. All right. So with open example text, W as file handler. If you run this code, it's going to write one line of text to the file handle and then it'll save it, and because it's in a with statement, it'll close the file, which flushes the data to disk. Let's verify that that writing worked. So here we are, we're gonna open it up again. Note that we're not specifying what mode it's in, so it's gonna to default to read-only mode. And if we run this, it'll read that file. And we, since we caught, said read instead of iterating over it with the for loop, it reads the entire file under memory and prints it out which of course in this case is one line of text. You can uh, use um, the open method to also, uh, or I should say a file method to seek within a file. A seek method, when you use the seek uh, method, it accepts two arguments. Offset, the number of bytes from whence, and whence is the reference point. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. You can set whence to one of three values. Zero, the beginning of the file, which is the default. One, the current file position. 
or to the end of the file. So if we do this with open example text as file handler, we can seek to the fourth byte, read the chunk at that point, and then print the chunk. So let's run that. So you can see it chopped off the first four bytes in the in the sentence that we had before, which was like this is a test. So it taught a bit of it um, we seeked past the fourth byte. So T H I S. We didn't seek the the little space. There's still a space there. You just can't see it in this output. But when you go ahead and put that out, that's what you get. So you can kind of seek around in a file. You might want to seek to the end and maybe like back up a couple of bytes just to see what's at the end of a file. This is this can be really helpful when you when you're searching a file for like updates or you know just other file manipulations. All right, let's talk to you about appending to a file. You can append data to a pre-existing file using the A mode, which is the append mode. So in this case, we open up the file again and do comma A, which puts it in append mode. What that'll do is it'll add this text to the end of the file. Um, let's go ahead and read it out again. So let's edit this code. What we'll is open it back out? Or open it back up, and we'll do file handler dot read. And let's see. I think we need to print that out. So let's print. See what we get. So we added. Here is some more text. Is when we use the append mode. Uh, one thing you need to note is that it didn't add it on as a new line. So you'll need to add it on um, as a new line yourself when you're writing. So if you go back to append and you do file, let's do file handler um, dot write, um, you can do slash n for a new line and say even more text. Let's write that out, and then we'll come back in here and undo all this, and see if that did what we thought it did. All right. So if we rerun this, we can see that because we did the slash n, it basically added a cage return on the end, or a new line, and now you have even more text on a separate line. So just keep that in mind when you're writing text to a file that you have to take care of that as well, or it's not going to work the way you expect it to. So let's talk about catching file exceptions. The most common file exception is OS error. So here we are, we're using try and accept again. This time we're doing try with open for a line. And you know, the WIS statement isn't going to like catch exceptions. So if we actually have, try like open a file that doesn't exist, it's going to throw an error like the file doesn't exist, or you try to write to a file that's read-only, you're going to get a different kind of error. The main thing that the WIS statement gives you is it will always close the file handler if an exception happens. So you don't need that finally statement anymore. But you do need to catch errors like the OS error, the I.O. error. There are some permission errors that you can catch in Windows. Just keep that in mind. That's how you'd catch it. You just do try, do your same with statement, that has the, the finally basically inside of it, and the accept will take care of any error that you can't, that you you need to catch. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments, drop me an email, or just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.